welcome back to another episode of Retro Reach Review. Today's game is Super Nichi Butsu Mahjong. Developed and published by Nihon Busan in 1992, Super Nichi Butsu is a fairly ordinary Mahjong game in most respects, but stands out for being well polished compared to other games of the era, a quality that would also appear in the sequel, Super Nichi Butsu Mahjong 2. A surefire way to ruin any good Mahjong game is bad music. Plenty of games have annoying music or obnoxious sound effects. Super Nichi Butsu falls on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Of all the Mahjong games I've played, the music here is by far the best. That isn't to say it's varied, however. As far as I've been able to tell, there's really only one song in the game, and it's amazing. Sure, there's different music for reaching, during the menus, and a few other places, but for the most part you'll be listening to just one song. Crazy enough, that's not a bad thing. It might have been nice to change the music while battling the league champions, but after 10 to 12 hours of playing, I never got tired of it. On the topic of sound, the voice samples aren't that bad for being on the Super Famicom. Eek. Different characters have different voices, which adds some personality. The only criticism I have is the difference between opponents calling Pon and Ron. Both sound identical, so it takes a moment to realize what's going on. I'm convinced they use the same samples for both calls. The game is themed around an office building, with each floor being a different game mode. When you enter the building, a receptionist greets you and asks if you want to select, create, or delete a profile. When you create a profile, you're asked for your name, astrological sign, sex, blood type, and where you're from. I'm not sure which of these determines what your character looks like, but it assigned me a child with a dog hat. First floor is the reception desk. The second floor is replay mode. Third floor is league mode. And the fourth floor is blank until you get first place in A-League. When you do that, the label changes to O Ike Taitsen Kaijo, or roughly, the finals hall. I'll get to that one in a minute. There are also two basement floors. B1 is the Mahjong Research Institute, and B2 is where you can learn how to play. Free play mode has the option to play two, three, or four player games, which is pretty interesting. Other than that, nothing stands out, so we'll go right to the next floor. League mode starts you in C League. In each league series, you play three games with the scores added after each game to determine placement. For example, if your scores are minus 20, 5, and 10, your overall score would be minus 5. If you finish in first place after all three games, you're promoted to the next league. After winning A League, you unlock the finals on the top floor where you battle against, I guess, the league champions? One looks like a magician, one looks homeless, and the last is a sage of some sort, each bearing a different dragon tile. The difficulty wasn't too high, so a competent player should be able to get through the whole league in under two hours. While there isn't much going on in league play that's particularly interesting, I would like to point out the players hyperventilating after some of the hands. I honestly have no idea what's going on here. Our first stop in the basement is the Research Institute. This is basically two-player free play with a few extras built in. By pressing select and going to help, you get three options. Retry, Discard Guide, and Open Arrangement. Retry starts the hand over with the same tiles drawn in the same order. Discard Guide gives you suggestions about the best tile to discard, and Open Arrangement allows you to play with your opponent's hand visible. The last option is really neat because it allows you to study the relationship between your opponent's hand and their discard pile, allowing you to identify patterns. The last floor is the classroom, where a sultry teacher gives you a comprehensive review of Mahjong, from the tiles and point sticks through... I have no idea, actually. It seems to be entirely text, where the sequel, Super Nichi Butsu Mahjong 2, has a lesson mode that includes illustrations. The art in the game is nice, on par with other Super Famicom Mahjong games. Opponents are drawn in a super deformed style with gigantic heads and other people, like the teacher and receptionist, a bit more anatomically correct. Speaking of anatomy, Nihon Busan also made adult-oriented Mahjong games under the brand Sphinx. While the Nichi Butsu games don't contain any adult content, they do have a habit of portraying women in bunny outfits, bathing suits, cocktail dresses, and so on. It's not so bad in this game, but it does get worse in other Nichibutsu games, so that's something to keep in mind if you're considering buying this game. Overall, the game is very well made, with the polish you would expect from a company making arcade games since the 70s. With its good music, art, learning tools, and a relatively low level of challenge, it's a great game to start if you're just getting into Mahjong. I rate the game 5 out of 5. Expect to pay somewhere around $5 for the cartridge by itself, $10 with the box and manual, and $8-$9 shipping if it's coming from Japan. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed my review of Super Nichibutsu Mahjong. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. If you have comments, you know where they go.